Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane. This video is part of my underrated game series and today we're going to be tackling the Super Nintendo. So there are all kinds of underrated games out there and honestly I'm going through some of the games that I collected while I was living through these eras and I wanted to be able to share some of this with you guys so that we could have a little bit more of a dialogue and that we could try to help each other out, discover new games to play, maybe new games to collect or anything like that. And so that's my main goal here is just to help you guys find more games. So with that, we'll start off with the first game released on the SNES. That's pretty much all of them in this video, but it's 1995 by Koei. Brandish is the name of the game. It is, this was kind of like the, the Zelda that I was really interested in. Very much a stress to survive kind of game where you have to upgrade your armor all the time. You have to pay for potions to heal. You have to buy swords or repair them because they break. Although every once in a while you could find a magical sword that did not break. But even then you would level up or get into harder areas and then it just didn't do enough damage. You had to worry about working up your stats. You didn't get automatic strength stats by leveling. You actually got strength stats by the number of times you were swinging to, to hurt enemies and stuff. And it was very, very difficult game. Very wonderful game. I absolutely love it, but very difficult. In fact, so difficult it almost took me two years to beat this game. But I definitely believe that it is worth playing and worth beating. Next up, I'm going to tackle a really oddball game. <laughs> and you'll get the pun in a second. It was released in 1992 by Bulletproof Software, and the game is Faceball 2000. Me and my friend, one of my friends growing up played this a lot because we could, and it had a great two-player mode. And it didn't get us in trouble because it didn't have all the blood and guts on it like Doom did. And that's kind of why it has like a special place with me. Next up, we have Justice League Task Force on the SNES 1995 by Acclaim. This is not the best fighting game in the world, but it has a bunch of DC characters and it was kind of in that Tood era when Superman had his long hair and stuff like that. And I honestly got to play this with the same friend that I played Faceball 2000 with quite a bit. And we had a blast playing this game. Is it as smooth as Street Fighter 2? No. Is it as bad as Weapon Lord? Again, no. It's kind of like in the middle there. And there is some fun to be had with this game. Speaking of oddball fun, we have Looney Tunes B-Ball on the SNES 1995 by Sunsoft. I'm not too much for sports games, but quirky sports games and comedic style sports games and arcade style sports games. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll bite. Mutant League Football or Looney Tunes Basketball or something like that. Yeah, and, and I grew up watching Looney Tunes, so that's kind of why this pulls at me. But it's got some good gameplay with a couple of weird gimmicks where you can like blow each other up, set each other on fire. Taz has a, a long shot where he basically swallows the basketball and spits it back out at a long distance to try to make the goal. And it does, it just does everything right. It's not too serious. Actually, it's very slapstick. All of the powers and stuff. I think that Smash Brothers pulled some of its DNA from this game. And it's just a lot of fun. Oh boy. Next up is a twofer. Lufia 1 and 2 on the Super Nintendo 
Lufia 1 was released in 1993 by Taito, and Lufia 2 was released in 1996 by Natsume. This is a wonderful RPG where they spent more money on story than they did graphics. Because, I mean, how are they going to compete with someone like Squaresoft when they're coming out with Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy 3 and all of these other great games and stuff when you just don't have that kind of budget? So if you can't beat them one way, try a different way. And that's exactly what Lufia does is they do a wonderful time putting in all of this effort for creating this beautiful story that gets you hooked. You get connected to the characters, like deep down connected to the characters. And it's a great and wonderful time. I don't think the game is still too expensive, even for a Super Nintendo RPG. But I wouldn't be surprised if the price started going up again. Uh, hopefully not too much, but again, I would not be surprised. And the last game that we have rounding out today is Marvel Super Heroes in the War of the Gems. Super Nintendo, 1996 by Capcom. This is not a fighting game because this, this basically came out right when the Infinity Gauntlet game fighting game came out in the arcades and while you are running around getting the infinity gems together and collecting them it's just it's a side scrolling beat em up you get to select any of like uh, quite a few different wide variety of the marvel superheroes some of my favorites are actually my favorite being iron man and it's a great side scrolling beat em up I kind of wish that this had come out in the arcades first and had more power there and then been scaled a little bit back for the Super Nintendo. But honestly, uh, I'll take what I can get. This is a great game. I absolutely loved playing it. And I think that you, you would have a lot of fun playing this game as well. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.